Today, we've got a shootout between three legendary muscle car motors. We've got the DZ302, the 365 horse 327, and the LT1350. Just to spice things up, to add a little double trouble, I also ran a shootout between LS motors, 4.8 liter, 5.3 liter, and a 6 liter. So here are the questions we're trying to answer. How is it that a 302, 327, and 350 all make about the same peak power? What effect does stroke length have on the torque curve? What effect does bore size have on the torque curve? Lots of questions. Let's go find the answers. In this video, we've got a comparison between three legendary muscle car motors. We have the 290 horsepower DZ302, the 365 horse 327L76, and the 370 horse LT1350. Now here's the comparison. All we have here is a change in stroke length from 3 inch to 3.25 to 3.48. All these engines had similar specs. In fact, the only change between the 302 and the 327 was the stroke length. They shared exactly the same cylinder heads, the same camshaft, the same compression, the same dual plane high rise intake and Holley carburetor. Now with the LT1, we had a slight change in cam timing, but as we'll see, the big change is that effect the stroke length had. Now we're gonna follow that up with a similar test on LLS1. We've got a 4.8 versus a 5.3 versus a 6.0. Now the change between the 4.8 and the 5.3 is just stroke length. The change between the 5.3 and 6.0 is bore size. But as we'll see, on the 6.0, it also has a little more cylinder head flow and a little different cam timing. So what effect does all this have on the power curve? Let's check out both and find out. To illustrate the effect of displacement on the torque curve, we're gonna show you a couple of cool uh, comparisons. Something old and something new. And in terms of something old, it's basically a comparison between three classic small block muscle car motors, a DZ302, an L76, which is a 365 horse 327, and a 1970 LT1, which is the 370 horse 350. So the cool thing about these is they all use basically the same components, the same compression ratio, the same fuely heads, the same style dual plane, high rise intake manifold, the same Holley carburetor, uh, and they all use very similar cam timing. In the case of the 302 and the 327, they actually use exactly the same cam. Now on the 350, on the LT1, they use a slightly milder camshaft, but as we'll talk about, the camshaft had less of an effect on the change in torque curve that we'll see uh, as the actual change in stroke and the change in displacement. So this is our DZ302, 1969 version. And this thing produced 357 horsepower and more importantly, 332 foot-pounds of torque, produced peak torque at 4,300 RPM, produced peak power out here at 6,700 RPM. So now this is the 302 that has a three inch stroke, a four inch bore and a three inch stroke. Now let's take a look at our slightly larger L76 327. 327 is in red. Now the 327, basically, this is where they got all the components to build the 302. This was the 365 horse 327. It was 11 to 1 compression, had the Duntoff cam, had fuely heads, had an aluminum high rise intake, and a Holley four barrel carburetor. The 302 was basically that same motor. Uh, but instead of the 3.25 inch stroke and the 4 inch bore, it had a 3 inch stroke and a 4 inch bore. And you can see these motors made very similar peak power. In fact, the DZ302 wanted to rev a little bit higher as we saw, um, and that's a function of displacement. The head flow just basically stops being able to feed that displacement at that RPM. And the RPM and the intake manifold also affect the shape of the power curve out there. But take a look at what the, the biggest thing there is the big change in stroke. So the added stroke and the added displacement dramatically affect the early part of the power curve. They dramatically affect torque production. So the 327 produced a lot more power from 3000 out past 5500 RPM. Then the power curves were very similar. Now, as we rev higher and higher, the smaller motors seem to do a little bit better 
Now let's take a look at what happened. So this is a comparison between the 302 and the 327. So now let's get to the 350. So this is a, a version of the 1970 LT1 350 that I built. And we see a similar trend here. We see a big jump in low speed power from 3000 out past 5500. I didn't rev the LT1 out as far as the others, but it, it would actually fall off um, much like the 327 did. And the reason that it would fall off for two reasons. One, again, we're running into a situation where this thing is making the kind of power that it makes with the available head flow, but it also had milder cam timing. They stepped down in the cam timing on the LT1, which I think they made a mistake there. It would have been nice to have that LT1, the 350-inch the motor, and combine it with that Duntoff cam because it had wilder cam timing. It would allow it, the, the, this thing to rev. But the reality is, as we saw the difference between the 302 and the 327, there's a big jump in torque. And we saw a, a similar jump in torque going from 327 to 350. That's really basically just the change in displacement. That's really the change in the stroke length. The camshaft had very little effect there because the, the difference between the 302 and the 327 it had the same cam so it, that was just the difference in the displacement so most of the difference in displacement or the, the change in torque from the 327 to the 350 was basically that stroke length more stroke more displacement more torque more average power production through the curve and that's what happens when we change the displacement like this it happens on the older motors like these classic muscle car motors but now let's take a look and see what happens on a modern ls combination After running the comparison on our muscle car motors, the DZ302, the 365 horse 327, and the LT1 350, we're going to switch things up and run a similar comparison on more modern motors. In this case, these are all LS family based motors. We've got a 4.8 liter, a 5.3 liter, and a 6.0 liter. And we've got some interesting comparisons here. Now, these were all run stock with long tube headers and no accessories. And, Nothing in front of the throttle body and an optimized tune with the Holly HP management system. If you'll notice, all of these made peak power obviously a lot earlier than the, those muscle car motors. These all have the mild factory truck cams in them and long runner intakes. So these things still did well and make lots of power, but it's, a, it's an interesting comparison. So we'll start out with our 4.8 liter. Now the 4.8 liter had a 3.78 inch bore and a 3.268 inch uh, stroke. So it had the shortest stroke of all of these combinations and it's a bore that it shared with the 5.3 liter. So this stock 4.8 liter produced 336 horsepower and 345 foot pounds of torque. These are good little motors. Uh, 4.8 liters are obviously very popular for turbo stuff and all kinds of buildups. They work really well. But here's our comparison with the 5.3 liter. So as we see, like we saw with the other combinations on the muscle car motors, when we stepped up in displacement, in this case we're stepping up in stroke length from the 3.26 inch stroke to the 3.62 inch stroke. <laughs> kind of a dys dyslexic stroke change there. But you can see the same thing happened as happened with our muscle car motors. When we went from the 4.8 to the 5.3, we get a lot more torque production down low. Now, out at the very top, out past 6,000 RPM, they made very similar power. As a matter of fact, we saw a similar thing as we did with the 302 and the 327, where the smaller motor maybe starts making a little bit more power there, but that's well past the power peak. Everywhere else, the bigger motor, the longer stroke motor, made more power, made more stroke. And this is why the difference between a 4.8 and a 5.3, if you're looking at doing something like this on a turbo application, why the bigger motor would dramatically improve spool up. It just makes a lot more torque down low. So that helps spool the turbo up if you're you know, worried about turbo sizing. So this is a comparison between the 4.8 and the 5.3. And in these two applications, the only change was the stroke length. They use the same cam, the same intake, the same cylinder heads. So it's a good comparison and shows the effect of the change in stroke length because they're about the same compression too. The 4.8 uses a flat top piston 
and the 5.3 like the LM7 uses a dish piston and that's what this was. This was a dish piston LM7. So we had similar compression, uh, same head, same camshaft, same intake manifold. So that's basically just the change in stroke length. So now let's add a 6 liter to the equation. And you can see the 6 liter basically makes more power everywhere. It definitely made more torque down low as, as we would expect from the change. Now compared to the 5.3, the 6.0 has a has the same stroke length 3.622 but it increased bore so as we see here it doesn't really matter whether you change the bore or the stroke when we change the displacement that's when we get a big change in torque production and in the case of the 6 liter there are a couple of other changes compared to the 4.8 and the 5.3 so not only do we change the bore instead of the stroke we also change cam timing and cylinder head flow now the 6 liter uses the same truck, early, this early style truck intake, which all of these three share the same intake manifold. But on the 6 liter we have the 317 heads, which as we know flow more than the 706 or the 862 heads. So there's more flow to support the additional displacement. And the 6 liter, this is an LQ4 actually, used uh, a, a different camshaft because this is a later LQ4. So it uses a different camshaft than the 4.8 and 5.3. It didn't use that LM7 LR4 camshaft. So it had slightly more camshaft and had more head flow. So that's what probably allowed it to produce more power out at the top compared to the other two because it had other things that would support that. It had the displacement to produce the extra torque, which we see in a comparison between the 4.8 and 5.3. Not only did it have that, but it had a little bit more cam timing and it had additional head flow. So that's good stuff that 6.0 had going for it that the other displacements did not have. This is, again, why when we're trying to spool a big turbo, we pick the bigger motor, more torque down low, more displacement, more spool up. It's all good. Let's get to our conclusion. Okay guys, what'd you think about our comparison between the DZ302, the L76-327, and the LT1-350? It definitely showed that as we stepped up in displacement, we definitely stepped up in torque production. Going from the 3 inch to the 3.25 up to the 3.48 inch stroke definitely increased torque production. And more torque is always better. It helps drivability, it helps tame the cam timing, and heck, even if you just want to spin the tires, more torque is always better. Now we saw the same thing on the LS side. Stepping up from the 4.8 to the 5.3 and then to the 6.0 definitely improved torque production. And this is really important if you're trying to spool up that big turbo. Going from a 4.8 to the 5.3, that added torque definitely going to help spool the turbo. Same thing stepping up to the 6.0. You just have to make sure to size the turbo correctly because remember that torque production and back pressure go hand in hand. Here's my takeaway from all of this. When it comes to torque production, bigger is better. I'm Richard Holder, guys. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell. Do all that stuff. More testing coming up.